I've learned today that I am blind. Ah, you're the Rangers, yes? I'm most pleased to see you. I'm Gideon Reyes. Uncle Gideon, you heard about my family? I did, Sobrina, and I'm so sorry. You know you always have a place in my house for as long as you need. I know, and I am grateful. But I have a place with these rangers now. We need to see justice done for my family. Is that so, rangers? She was always an impressive girl. My sister would be proud of her. Now, I expect you're here about my call. There is a situation in Colorado Springs that requires a delicate touch. But first, you need to know the truth about this city. Colorado Springs isn't as prosperous as it pretends. We can barely feed our existing population. And now, smugglers are bringing refugees into the city every day. If we had enough food to support them, we would welcome them. But we don't. I've asked the Patriarch to chase off these smugglers, but he says the crisis with the Dorseys and his children have left the marshals spread too thin. It seems he'd rather just have Sheriff Daisy keep putting refugees in the pillories, rather than stopping the tide at its source. It's infuriating. And that is why I've called you. The Plains, mostly. After the Patriarch defeated the Eastern Gangs, people started settling out there, thinking it was safe. Now the gangs have returned, and all the homesteaders are fleeing back to Colorado Springs. Oh, of course. And not just in money. I do a lot of business with the local Arapaho Garage, and I can get them to provide you with mechanics to service your vehicle. They always have the best, and I'll pay for everything. Thank you. I'm told the smugglers are operating out of the bazaar, a trader's market east of Colorado Springs. When you find them, well, do what you can. Convince them to take the refugees elsewhere. Convince them to stop entirely. Arrest them. I just want this problem to go away. Thank you for agreeing to help. You are doing Colorado Springs a great service. Goodbye. All right. So I need to go to Bazaar. How the fuck do I go to Bazaar? Oh, I bet I have to get in my car, don't I? Okay, I know what to do. Hope everybody's having a good day. Loading screen. So, anybody bored? How I... Or wait. He Who Fights With Monsters on Royal Road is a fantastic story. Go check that shit out. It's great for loading screens. Kodiak. Down here? Down, oh, straight across. Okay. They're all gone.
I think it was her, actually. I just got adoption papers on. What do you want? No, please, I just need you to go away. Please. I, I don't know. We were heading to Colorado Springs with a lot of other folks when we, we, uh, got separated. I, I hurried here as quick as I could after, but I ain't found her anywhere. I keep hoping. <laughs> there, there was this smiling lady. She said she had some food, and I could take some back to my mom if I came with her. And next thing I know, she was gonna sell me. She put me in a cage. One of her men took me out of the cage to... to... I kicked them as hard as I could and ran. They didn't find me in the dark. And then I saw some refugees and tagged along. Stayed with them till I got here. Uh, bye. Yeah. Sounds like I'm going to be putting a lot of people on the ground with this smiling woman shit. A lot of motherfuckers real deep in that dirt. It's a really good RPG. Like... Impressive. It feels like what Fallout should have been. Like, it's obviously heavily influenced by it, right? But it's done everything so much better so far. Yeah. I think what Fallout wanted to be is what I would say this game is, at this point at least. I don't know how the story develops, as I'm still real early on in it, but... I get the feeling this is like a 50 hour game. Finally, and I'm just now getting decent at the combat. Hi, I'm Austin. I'm new. Welcome aboard. Where are you from? Hello, Rangers. Uh, um, permission to. Oh, this is that kid I saved. I just wanted to say thank you again for saving my life. If you hadn't talked to Judge Watkins, well, I wouldn't be here. And. And I'm really happy to be here. I guess that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Oh, and, uh, Mom thanks you, too. Hey, no rappers. Hope you catch that victory kid soon. Before he hurts somebody. Hey, it's clean as shit in here. Happy to help the refugees, but damn, it's tight in here now. We're pitching in where we can. I hope we've been some help at least. Anything? Oh, Andy. Damn it. I was afraid of that. We've been locked up for days, but at least we had our supplies with us. How did he? No. I don't want to know. Enough death in this world. Don't need the details to make it even more bitter. Thanks for telling me, Rangers. Well, be careful out there. It's an uncaring world. Package people are nice enough, but they're really underfoot. What do you think? Scrubbed up nice, huh? What can I do for you? You haven't arrested anyone yet, Rangers. But you can bet they'll be in good hands when you finally bring the lawless to justice. Oh, if I arrest people, they go here. Alright, that makes sense. So maybe I won't just straight off the smiling woman. I probably will, but maybe not. This doesn't feel like the kind of society where you really... ...need a prison? It's basically put them to work or put them in the ground.
my armory with the Vegas people? Really? Really? sent me down you know is apparently i'm supposed to be your new armory guy that's good you know i know my way around this stuff well you know though he is an honest businessman and upstanding citizen mr brigo has more than his share of uh, enemies which means that he needs uh, bodyguards and those bodyguards need uh, tools yeah so he had been doing business with me a simple freelance gunsmith but he got tired of waiting for me to finish up work for other clients. So he decided to employ me full time. Find, clean, and service guns for him, and only him. Since then, I've been a made man and do whatever Mr. Brigo wants. And right now, he wants me to find, clean, and service guns for you. Nah, it's my favorite subject. I'm the son of a son of a son of a gunmaker. And I'm proud of carrying on the family trade. Back in Vegas, the Bugger Donuts name has been synonymous with the finest quality guns since before the war. Whenever anybody's plugged anybody else in Vegas for the last hundred years, you can bet that a bag of donuts was part of it. And now that Mr. Brigo is in Colorado, I'm hoping to continue that tradition here. Let me show you. Weapon. All right, so you get a discount. All right. So she's got a sniper rifle with seventy top end. Sniper rifle with over one hundred top end. Oh, we're buying that. Her shotgun is probably the best. Of Got a shitty little pulse rifle. An assault? No assault rifle, really. Lame. It does remind me though, in Assault rifle. None of these are revolvers, alright. Oh yeah. Huge damage spike. This refugee situation. Let me show you. Yeah, it's fine. Alright, one more room to check out. Our medical facility. Hey, Rangers. I'm here at last. Uh, it'll take a while. But I think I'll be able to make an actual surgery out of this place. Just need to call in a few favors for equipment and supplies. If you need treatment now, well, I think I'm ready for that. What do you need? Fine. Everything is fine. For now. I'll do what I can. Have a seat. Cool, so this guy just fully heals you whenever you come by. Hmm. I brought a few things over from the garage. Not much yet, but... Oh, it's Irv. Forgot he was here. Thanks again for letting me work for you. This is so exciting. I, I am so happy. I'm learning so much. All my life, I wanted to be a scientist, but all I could do was read the books and dream. And now I can actually do things. It's incredible. 
He's wonderful. He's almost as smart as Dr. Finster, but without all the, um, you know, evil. Important not to have all the evil. Oh, an amplifier that goes to 11. Uh, yes, theoretically, I can have the machine take your genetic material and run the process. Uh, but, um, no guarantee what comes out the other end. I did make a few tweaks to the process, though, so whatever it is, it probably won't be so angry. Probably. Okay, well, how exciting! Uh, but before we start, one tiny caveat. The process requires special genetic material, and I've only got enough for one clone, so if anything happens to our new friend, try to recover its remains so we can reuse them. Now, put your palm on the machine right here. It's a clone of me. Kind of. If life gives you lemons, make lemonade! Everything happens for a reason! It's like nobody is watching! Life is- Life is what happens to you while you're- Oh my god. He's a fortune cookie. Alrighty then, uh, that's the thing that just happened. We're just gonna move on. Glad to see you back, Rangers. Cleaned up the war now. What? Well, I've got friends in the marshals. The Patriarch's Palace Guard and some local militias. They've always got more folks wanting to sign up than they have positions for. So I asked my pals to send over everybody on their waiting lists. Now some of these folks may be, uh, less than top grade for sure. But most will be solid recruits, ready and willing to learn. You'll have to pick and choose. Happy to tell you what you need to know. Well came here with my folks when I was a kid and was a young man when Saul was trying to unite the families and make Colorado a state. I got behind him right away. He had leader written all over him, even back then. I've served at his side ever since, fighting against the monster army, consolidating power here in town, helping him expand our borders. What Mr. Gradsky means is that he played a key role in many of the Patriarch's greatest victories. And he had no small part in making Colorado what it is today. You're too kind, Darius. Well, the fighting's never really ended. Trying to hold it all together is a constant struggle. This business with his children is just the latest in a long line of troubles. <laughs> I do indeed. Some folks can't get past his brusque ways, but that's just the impatience of a man who knows what's right, dealing with fools who don't. He cares too deeply about the well-being of the people of Colorado to let political courtesy slow him down. Of course... You'll hear a lot of folk condemning him for hurting this group or that group with his decisions. But the way I see it, they should be glad it wasn't them who had to make the choice.
stories? <laughs> ah, they are stories indeed these days. I've told them so many times, all the truth's been wrung out of them. Now, let's see. Ah, here's one. So, one day we were hunting monster army raiders and came upon a tin-walled shack. The people inside were shooting at us and not answering our calls to parlay. Well, I got sick of that real <laughs> quick and unslung my rocket launcher. But Saul, he holds up a finger, then creeps around behind the compound. Well, pretty soon we hear him smashing through those tin walls with his hammer, and then comes two high-pitched screams. A few moments later, he comes striding out, carrying a child under each arm. They've been shooting at us because they thought we were coming to eat their dying parents. Now, I will never know how Saul knew it was kids in there rather than raiders, but somehow he did. And we brought them and their folks back to the city and helped them out until they got well again. And he's always been like that. An uncanny ability to always do the right thing. Unless maybe he was in league with the raiders, knew where the children would, and it was, and then used the raiders as a scapegoat to further the ideal that he is an exceptional human, always out to do the right thing. Too. What's on your mind? I'll be here. All right, you guys. I'm gonna take a break. See you later. Think about it. <laughs>